Hi everybody, how's it going? It is Nick from Astro Exploring and in today's video I'm going to do something called astrophotography which feels a little bit alien to this channel because it has been 10 months since I did an astrophotography vlog out in the back garden doing some imaging with all of you on this channel and since I did that I've gained probably like 5,000 subscribers so there's probably 5,000 of you sitting out there that have never actually seen me out in the garden um, doing an astrophotography video so welcome. Now everybody knows that astrophotography also comes with a slight alcohol addiction and what I'm drinking tonight is despite the glass that says old moot cider it is Lily's cider which is from Somerset in the UK and Honestly, their range of cider is just the best that I've ever come across. Really uh, refreshing, really fruity, and uh, some of them are quite strong as well, so <laughs> I can't drink too many of them, but uh, cheers. So I've got a couple of updates that I want to share with you today. The first one is that I've put on a few COVID pounds, all right? Let's just get that out there. If you're wondering who's this guy that has eaten Nick, it's still me, I'm just a bit fatter than I used to be. <laughs> um, but anyway, let's go outside because actually the most interesting updates are out there. Let's do that. Hey Hugo. What are you doing? It was Hugo's birthday a couple of days ago and he's just been running around the garden with his, one of his new toys, haven't you? Yes, is that exciting? Yes, good boy. Oh, here it goes. Uh, the next update that I want to share with you is um, these two giant <laughs> houses that are now behind me. Um, really frustrating. Obviously, there's very little that I can do about it other than perhaps burning them down or something like that. Um, but um, all jokes aside, um, there's not really anything that I can do about that. I, they've been coming for a couple of years. We knew that they were going to happen, but still frustrating nonetheless. Um, so just so that you've got some bearings. So my garden faces southwest, so that house there is directly southwest behind us. So you're looking at south being sort of roughly over there somewhere, um, which is really frustrating because... Um, generally how my imaging sessions go is that there'll be a target that will just appear behind my neighbor's roof there and I'll track that all the way across the sky all the way over to where this house is now in the way um, and that distance there it takes about three hours for travel um, so uh, unless the target is really high in the sky um, that house is going to cause me a real problem actually this one isn't actually that much of a problem even though it is directly behind me it's this one that's really going to be in the way um, naturally it'll get a little bit better once they take the scaffolding down which will hopefully be in a few days time anyway moving on to the real reason why you're watching this video the most exciting update is the fact that I've got a new astronomy camera so this is the ZWO 533 MC Pro this is a one-shot color camera and I'll go into the reasons why I got that in a moment um, and I've also purchased the uh, two inch filter drawer to go along with that um, and following the guide on the ZWO website which I'll leave a, a link to in the description down below um, I've connected it as per their recommendation to get the right backspace for focus which is 55 mil hopefully focusing won't be a problem I've connected it all up I've managed to sort of do a couple of quick test exposures and tested that the cooling works and everything like that. So, um, so that's all good. Hugo is now in his prime position. He will probably stay there for as long as I am out here doing astrophotography. So why did I go for the 533 MC Pro? More importantly, why did I go for a color camera over a mono camera? Um, this is a topic that is debated all of the time in the astrophotography forums and my simple answer to that, if my opinion is worth anything at all, which it isn't really, then it's honestly, for me, just down to two things. Well, the first one being the cost. It's more expensive um, to get into mono than it is to go one-shot colour. Um, but the second, and this is the biggest factor for me, is my laziness. I just honestly can't be bothered. The weather in the UK is infamously crap and I mean this is my first clear night um, we've had a couple of nights but I've not actually been at home so I can't really count those this is my first clear night for 
nearly eight weeks. I think, it, I think it's been seven weeks since my last clear night. And therefore, if I'm putting together a mono image, a lot of people say you need more time. I don't really buy into the more time. I've seen some amazing images that have been one hour of data on each channel and some other YouTubers that you'll have seen have, have done this. And so I don't really buy into the whole time thing. However, I am very lazy and it adds a lot more complexity. So obviously you need to have a, a filter wheel and all of the different filters. And I honestly, I just can't be bothered. <laughs> I like the idea of just having a color camera, sticking one filter in, pressing go, and away it goes and it's all sorted for me. The second important thing to note about this camera is that it is a cooled camera. So this has arrived at the perfect time for me now that the uh, warmer, lighter nights are here. So we currently have absolutely no astro dark here for the next couple of months. I've only got nautical dark and even that is only lasting for three and a half hours. So the nights are really short. I've got between basically half past 11 uh, just before three o'clock in the morning. So it's a really short window and it's not even proper dark either. So that's a real pain, but naturally with the summer months uh, come warmer nights as well. And so that on a DSLR will add a lot more noise to your images when you've got that really hot sensor cooking on the uh, long exposures that we do in astrophotography. So a cooled camera will absolutely have a lot less noise which is really important for astrophotography. Finally, the one inch square sensor, and that's one inch diagonally across the sensor, means that with my three inch refractor, which is a 420 mil focal length, I will be much more cropped into my targets than I was on my DSLR, which for me is a bonus. Uh, the only time that that becomes a little bit of an annoyance is where I'll no longer be able to get two targets in the same field of view. I haven't tested it yet, but uh, the Veil Nebula, for example, I can get the East and Western Veil Nebula in the same field of view with my uh, DSLR. I don't think I'll be able to do that with this camera. I haven't put the details into Stellarium yet to check, but I'm pretty sure that I won't be able to. And while I'm talking about the camera, I just want to say a huge, huge thank you to everybody who has either subscribed to this channel, watched any of my videos, liked any of my videos, shared them on social media, or ever gotten in touch with me or visited my website or however it is that you have supported me. Because the only reason that I've been able to make this purchase is because of you guys. And that is purely down to the revenue that has been made from me having this YouTube channel. And so genuinely this purchase wouldn't have been possible without you guys watching my videos and actually taking an interest in anything that I have to say. So I'm eternally grateful that you guys have made this happen for me. So thank you. Okay, so I have polar aligned. It is still getting dark. It's uh, just coming up to five to 11 now. Um, there's a few clouds around, they're due to clear in the next sort of half an hour or so, which is perfect timing. Um, I've managed to connect to the camera um, and I've been playing around with some of the settings in order to be able to see live view so that I can focus and also do my star alignment because I'm not plate solving it. So you can, you can see here, this is doing five second loops. I've added the crosshairs here so you can just see a white blob in the middle there. That's the star Vega, that's the star that I'm using to do my alignment because um, it's very close to the target that I'm going to be imaging tonight which is the North American Nebula. And so now that I've centered the star I just want to uh, make sure that I've focused properly so I've got the Batonov mask on the front of the camera so I'm going to go ahead and turn off the crosshairs and just zoom in. I did have a little quick play with this while it was zoomed out so I, th I know that it's roughly there I just want to zoom in to make sure that it's as perfect as it can be. I forgot to add that I also bought a new filter the Optolong L Extreme you know that I've been using the L Enhance with my DSLR for a, about a year now absolutely love that filter I've now got the two inch version L Extreme to go into the filter drawer that I got with the ZWO 533 uh, so really excited for that. Okay, so technically this is now um, second light because my first night I kind of took it for granted that everything was aligned and working and capturing images properly and it wasn't. So whenever I used to shoot with my DSLR I would um, do a, a star align 
and then I would just slew to my target. The target would always be in the field of view, right in the center, and away I went. And because I've got such a wide field setup, I was always really confident that it would work, and it always did. But I kind of forgot to do that the first time I was trying out the 533. So when I star aligned and then slew to my target, the target was in the field of view, but only just, and therefore the night of imaging was total waste of time, unfortunately. And it's kind of my fault because I'm not plate solving yet. I have just ordered the cable from First Light Optics. So hopefully when I come around to doing imaging in a couple of weeks time, when clear skies roll around again, that's maybe optimistic, I'll be able to plate solve and hopefully make it a bit easier. But just as a tip for those like me that aren't plate solving, and I should have done this the other night and I didn't, if you go to astrometry.net, you can actually upload your image files to this online. It just takes a couple of minutes, it'll process it and it will point out stars and deep sky objects within your field of view. So tonight, because I was still doing the star alignment on the handset, I chose the star Deneb because it's right next to the North American Nebula. And I wanted to be sure that that was the star in the in the field of view that I was aligning to. So uh, I just took a quick snap of it, uploaded it to this, and you can see that Deneb is the star in the center of view. So I aligned to that. And then I've taken a test exposure of the North American Nebula, and that seems to have worked fine. And I'm now just trying to get my guiding going, but that seems to be a little bit funny at the moment. But hopefully I'll be able to get that going in a minute and then start snapping some images and have an image to share with you at the end of this video. <laughs> 